Welcome to part one of our Errors in Programs series. And in this lesson, we're going to be looking at types of errors that you come across. Some of this might be familiar to you from grade 10. And then as well as debugging, how do I fix some of the errors? We're going to give you a little bit of some tips on how you can try to solve those errors that are plaguing you in your programs. So let's talk about the different types of errors that you get. Now, you would have remembered from your very first programming, uh, lessons, if you had done, written any code and there was a mistake in your code, you would have come across what's called a syntax error. A syntax error is when you violate the rules of Delphi with regard to what the code must look like and the structure of that. Just like in the English language, all letters must start, or all sentences, sorry, must start with a capital letter and must end with a full stop. That is the syntax of the English language. For Delphi, it also has rules about what can be done. For example, each line of code must end with a semicolon. Variable names have particular rules to how you can name variables. So all those rules have to be adhered to. And if you violate one of those rules, then your program will not run. It will not compile, which means a, a big red line will come across your screen wherever the error is or where the problem is. And it will try to give you a little bit of a tip or hint or try to identify what the error is. Sometimes that, that message is quite clear and it helps you quite nicely about what exactly must be fixed. Sometimes it, it, it's not very clear and you've got to try to figure it out and that's going to come with experience. As you write more code and create more errors, you're going to come across errors that you've never seen before and you eventually fix them. Go, ah, when I see that particular error, it could be that syntax issue. So that's syntax errors. The other type of error that you get is called a semantic error. And these are the problematic errors because Delphi doesn't tell us where there's a problem. Now, there are two types of semantic errors. The one is a logical error and the other is a runtime error. So let's look at these two errors in more detail. Now, the logical error is when the program will still run. It will still compile and it will still... So there's no error message that pops up, no red line, no indication of what's the problem. The problem is that the result or the outcome of the program is not what you think it should be or not the way it should work out. So it could give incorrect results. It could The formula could be incorrect, things like that. So for example, if you took the average of two marks, if I say mark one plus mark two divided by two, that should work out the average. However, if you know your bod maths, that calculation is actually incorrect because it's just going to divide mark two by two and then that answer will then be added onto mark one and that's a very different answer to adding the two marks together first and then dividing by mark two so in that case there's an error in the logic of the formula another potential error could be if you want to find all those in grade in high school so those are obviously grade eight and higher so you could have an if statement like this but the logic in it is that hey grade eight is also one of the high school grades. So you actually need to say if grade is greater than equal to eight. So that's what would normally happen if you've got a particular logical error and stuff like that. So errors where the logic is not following or you've got stuff in the wrong order, or wrong sequence of events, maybe you added a value at the beginning when you're supposed to add it at the end, things like those. Those are examples of logical errors. Now, the other type of error is a runtime error. Now, this error also, the program runs, and it compiles very nicely, and it, it works. The problem is, at some point in the program, the program will crash or stop. And that's because you violated some sort of rule, or mathematical rule particularly. Um, so an example could be, maybe you're going to divide two values. And the problem is, at some point, value two becomes a zero. And as you know, you, in mathematics, you cannot divide by zero. Another type of program or thing that will make your program crash or stop working is if you've got, for example, an infinite loop where you've got a conditional loop and that condition is never met. So that loop goes on forever and ever and ever. So in that example, you can see while i is, is greater than 5, keep doing the loop. And you can see i starts at 10 and keeps going up. It will never actually be greater than 5. So that loop continues forever. So that's also an error that stops your program from running because it crashes at some point. Okay, so let's have a look at these type of errors and what they look like in Delphi. So let's first look at the syntax errors that we did from grade 10. So if you run Delphi, it will indicate where the errors. You can see I've got some errors popping up here. So if I run Delphi, it will hopefully go, hey, there's a couple of errors. Yes, there is. There we go. It says, hey, a colon equal to is expected, but only equal to is expected. So there's a very clear message of what is missing. 
So there I'm missing the assign to symbol. And then I can run it again. And now it says missing operator or semicolon. Now I can see that that X is supposed to be a times. Now that message is quite unclear. And so hopefully with experience, you'll come, hey, that should probably be a times. That's probably, as long as you know where the error is, that can hopefully guide you in what can be the mistake. A reminder, if it is a missing operator or semicolon error, it's normally the line above um, that particular red line. Okay, so let's run it again. And it goes, hey, we don't know what int o string is. Ah, because it's supposed to be int to string, I-N-T-T-O-S-T-R. So we've misspelled one of the functions. Run it. Ah, and if it runs and it compiles, then we know that our program works. Fantastic. So that's how we solved all the syntax errors. So now that we've done that, let's take those away. And let's look at logical errors. Remember, we use this in the example. If you take two marks and you divide it by two, you should get the average. So with our two marks, if you get 85 out of 100 and 75 out of 100, I um, mean, the average should be around about 80. That's what we expect the results to be. But when I run the code over here and I go, hey, types of errors, it says that the average is 122. So that's quite impossible. With two tests out of 100 and you didn't get full marks, it's impossible to get above full marks for them. So that's obviously a a problem with our logic so obviously I'm going to put brackets around the mark 1 and mark 2 because we want to add them first before we divide it by 2 and if I run the code this time and go hey there we go that's a much better result so that's why when you're writing code um, it's very good to have uh, examples of input that you give the program that you know what the results must be so that you can test to see if your logic is being adhered to that you are producing the expected results that's a good part of your testing. So let's look at a runtime error. Now over here, we're going to find the average of num divided by count. But as you can see, count is a zero. So that's going to make our program crash. So we can see what it would look like. Boom. Something like that will pop up. So hey, there's a floating point division. The program has crashed. It doesn't mean able to do the rest of the code and stuff like that. So that would stop my program from running. And there's a problem over there. So those are examples of syntax logical and runtime errors. Now we're going to look at some tips on debugging. So when you're trying to solve these logical and runtime errors, they are quite difficult to solve because Delphi doesn't tell you where the problem is. So you've got to try to figure out where the, the mistake is, especially if you've got lots of code. So I'm going to show you two little things that can help you um, with your debugging, trying to find out what's actually happening in your code. They're not recipes to fix all your problems, but they're little tools that can help you try to identify where the mistake could be. So let's look at this example. Here we've got a program where we've got a code where we've got three words that are separated by commas, and we basically want to extract those three letters and have word one, hello, then a new line, everyone, and then a new line. Yeah, that's what we are wanting the code to do. So when I run it, let's see if it does that. There's no syntax errors. Um, there you can see, oh, that does not look like what we want. So there's obviously a problem over here. So what I'm going to do is I want to see how this code changes um, throughout the lifespan of this button. So what I'm going to do is on this area over here next to the code, next to the, the line number, over here I'm going to click and put a red dot there. That's going to be called a break. And what happens then is when it gets to this particular line, the code will stop running in the program and it will allow me to go through each line individually. And the way I'm going to do that is if I click on run, you can step over each individual line of code to see how it executes. And then we'll be able to see what the values are going to be. So let's do this quickly. So we run our program. So the program will run as normal, but when it gets to that line, when this button gets pressed, we will execute that code. And it'll get to this line. So you see now it's stopped. It's right here at the actual code of the program. It hasn't done all the code. It's just stopped there. And if I move my mouse over S code, you'll see that there's nothing in S code. If you move your mouse over these variables, it'll actually tell you what's in those variables. And that is because S code, this line, it stopped here. It hasn't actually done that code. So I'm going to press F8 and it jumps to the next line of code. Now, if I put my mouse over S code, you see what S code is? That's hello, everyone here. That's exactly what we want it to be. Now, the value for the comma, we don't have a value, but if I press F8 to execute that line, you'll see that the value of the comma is a 6. So there we go. And we can work through next few lines, boom. We can look at S word 1, that is successful, getting the word hello. 
But now if I put my mouse over S code, you'll see it's changed because we deleted that code. Delete was executed. So now it's just everyone. So now when I do this line, if I go press F8 and go, hey, ah, uh, it goes every instead of everyone. Why is that happening? Well, because it's going to six mine. Oh, so I've figured out that it's going to six, which is not the position of the second comma. We should actually find the position of the new comma. And so that's where my problem is. So I'm going to stop this code. I'm going to break the program, reset the program. And I'm going to say, hey, you know what? I need to find the position of the comma again before I extract the second word because when I delete those letters over there, I need to find the position of the second comma. And then when I run the program this time, it'll break at this particular point again. I go F8, 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 and I go, yeah, ah, oh, that looks a lot better. I can see all my values are correct. And if I press F8 for the last step, it actually jumps back to the program and says, hey, everything's been displayed. So, and then we can just reset the program to go back there. And if I want to remove that break, I'm happy with my code. I just click on the little dot there and that will mean my program will run as normal. So there's a nice little example of check in to see what your code is doing. The other example is you can use what's called a watch list. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is when you move your mouse over a variable, let's say I want to see how this count and the sum is changing in this loop. I can put a right click there and go to debug and I can add watch. So what it's going to do is this little watch list will appear because, hey, our count has been added to the watch list. So there's a whole bunch of variables that have already been added there, already added some, but you can say, hey, count has been added to the watch. I'm going to keep some there as well. You can also click on run and you can go to add watch and there you can actually add a particular variable to the watch. You've got more options over there. And what this watch list will do is it'll go, hey, Let's keep track of those variables as we cause a break. I'm going to put another little red dot there. And as we go through, we want to see how those variables change. So let's run the program. Boom. And when we click on the button, it will jump to this particular line. Now you'll notice over here, we can actually see all the variables values. You can see all of them. And as I go F8, you can see how all of them are changing. Now, the problem with this part over here is that those you might have so many variables, it's difficult to find which variables you want to keep track of. If you want to keep track of particular ones, you can see over here, I've got the watch list of just the ones I want. I've got some twice. I don't know why I've got some twice, but there we go. Now, I press F8, and I can actually see, as I press F8, as it goes through the loop, you can see it traversing through the loop here. And over here, you can see how the values of our count and our sum are changing. And so I can pick up where there's a problem, maybe in the loop, something that causes it to crash. And that way I can obviously see what's going to happen. So there I can see when it's following the rules and so on and so on. And you can still move your mouse and say, hey, what is our num and what is our and so on. You can see ours are 14 at this point and so on. And you can go through the loop. Obviously that's going to go till 50, so it's going to be a while. So you can just keep pressing that and so on. And when you find your error, you can just say, hey, okay, found the error and take the break away. So those are two little techniques that can help you try to decipher where the error in your logic or your code is going to cause a runtime error. Why is it doing that? So hopefully that has been useful. For more videos in this video series, as well as other RT-related videos, go to our YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe. We'd love to hear from you. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, give us your feedback. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long.